Today is July 10th, Friday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. If you're following along in Give Us This Day, the prayers begin at page 112. And just to give you a heads up, I'm going to use the Grail Psalter translation for the psalm tonight because I'd like to use the uh, psalmody of Father Joseph Jeleno. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 126. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. The heathens themselves said what marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed we were glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The God who is, who was, and who will be, world without end. Tonight's reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We are fools on Christ's account, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To this very hour we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all. To this very moment. The Word of the Lord. This brief excerpt looks like the ravings of a man struggling with a very modern malady, low self-esteem. If these were the real self-assessments of Christians, I doubt that the Jesus movement of the first century would have ignited the imaginations of very many people, especially the larger-than-life character of Paul, and spread as it did like wildfire to the ends of the earth. This is Paul at his ironic best. He's actually addressing Corinthian believers but believers who bask in self-importance. The point he is making is that this is neither a respected attitude nor even a goal for the followers of Christ. There is a clear difference between pride in honest, open-hearted accomplishment and the pride of self-promotion. Paul's use of sarcasm here is meant to set in high relief the honorable pride of Christ's truly committed followers from the egotistical pride of the uh, situational Christians who enjoy their status 
but who can't be bothered to be of service to anyone but themselves or to people like themselves. As this week draws to a close, review the days past. Has your identity as a Christian motivated every action and thought and word in imitation of Christ? Or has it been brought out whenever it has been to your advantage, or simply to show your affiliation? Paul might have called himself Christ's fool, and sometimes might even have believed that about himself. But in this letter, he is forcing the hand of his readers, including all of us, to take a second look at ourselves. Are we fools because we adhere intimately to Christ? Or are we fools because we use Christ for our own ends and purposes? Whoever endures to the end will be saved. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Whoever endures to the end will be saved. God of the living, you work great deeds for us, and we are filled with joy. In faith we pray, make us strong in the truth, O God. Strengthen missionaries and religious leaders who face persecution or resistance from those they serve. Make us strong in the truth, O God. Give journalists and reporters courage and prudence, knowledge and integrity. Make us strong in the truth, O God. Nurture the faith of your youth ministers, coaches and camp personnel. Make us strong in the truth, O oh God, and for what else might we pray for this evening? In faith we pray, make us strong in the truth, O oh God. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the God of may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us forever. Amen. Enjoy the weekend, have a peaceful night, and I'll see you again on Monday.